I have a blog. It's at uh, gauchetalkstechnology.wordpress.com. And on that blog, over many years, since 2011, since 2011, I have spoken about technology the way I see it, right? Which may not always be the same way that technology works in a workplace. So in my professional career in software development, I used Microsoft technology and I wrote C-sharp applications since the year 2000. In the year 2000, C-sharp was in beta, .NET was in beta. And I was fortunate enough to work at a company or for a client, because I was a consultant, that wanted to take a chance on using .NET. And so I did the inaugural uh, project in .NET and became one of the first .NET developers that uh, existed. So it was an awesome experience to evolve with that platform and to use that in a professional capacity. Over time, my technological experience grew and my knowledge in technology grew and I had been exposed to more than 100 software development projects. And so throughout the course of that time, not only building software applications and working with executives and others in the automation of businesses, the implementation of e-commerce, I gained an insight about technology that inevitably affected my my opinions, affected my, my point of view. And in addition to building software applications, I supported those applications. I also helped people with their computers in the workplace. Um, giving an assistance to IT or on those jobs where I was both software development and IT, you know, working on the hardware side. So I worked on the hardware side, I worked in networks, I worked with databases. And starting out from someone who just worked in user interfaces, HTML, JavaScript, back in the early 2000s, the late 19s, late 90s, early 2000s, and then evolving into full stack application systems, right? Application systems where you are building the database, you are building relational databases, you are designing data architectures, and you're just getting so deep into it. When I started doing my personal projects, I found that I did not want to replicate in my personal projects what I was doing in what I would call my day job. So I had a couple of reasons for that. And one of the reasons why I chose Linux is that I saw a tool, I saw an environment that was much more flexible or to be much more blunt, I like the freedom that I gained from Linux. And at that time, I just wanted to be able to take my computers and I wanted to be able to reconfigure them on a dime and I wanted to be able to change them whenever I wanted to. And Linux gave me more flexibility to do that than I enjoyed with Windows. I also saw the possibility of broadening my technological expertise with Linux because I saw in that community a much deeper understanding of computers and of technology than I saw in the Microsoft environment. I've been exposed to some very talented individuals that work with Microsoft technology, exceptional in building software applications, business applications, great minds, but what I saw in the Linux community was a level of depth that went much further. And that became increasingly evidenced to me 
when I saw that at that time these were new companies. I saw the likes of Google, I saw the likes of Amazon, and then later Facebook. I saw that Linux is what they use. I started asking questions because you have to keep in mind I was more or less in a, what you would call a a, a a vendor bubble. I lived and breathed all things Microsoft way back then. And so you could say I didn't know any better. And so I lived and breathed everything Microsoft, but once I started seeing something else, I started seeing that that bubble that I was in that I thought was this was actually this and that this other thing was actually this. So I said, I want to be part of the larger rather than the smaller. And I started investigating Linux more and more and more until around 2009, I made it my daily driver in my own personal computers. Although I, I continued to sustain employment and a career using Microsoft technology. The, the division was fine by me. I liked that. I liked it very much because things can grow stale if you're also using it in private. You know, you use it in public. You know, things can grow stale. So that they played off of each other and it allowed me to rejuvenate the Microsoft and I was able to bring some perspectives from my experience in Microsoft over into what I was doing with Linux. But as I got more involved with Linux, I started to learn more about open source and free software. And it was amazing that the concepts lined up with what was legitimately a path to innovation, to allowing more people from various ages and different backgrounds to get involved in and participate with technology. So I became an, a private advocate for Linux. And then I shifted from my use of the C-sharp programming language in my personal life to the use of C and C++. And it was awesome because I got to work with the operating system and with technology at a deeper level than I had the, uh, the mandate to do in my day job, right? Because in your day job, you're trying to accomplish something for a business goal. And in many cases, on an accelerated timetable. And it's not a research and development situation. It's not an R&D situation. So in my personal life, I found a perfect operating system for research and development. I found programming languages that did not change every six months to every two years and I found a much more stable environment by which I could investigate and research certain things. So that was kind of my start with Linux and C++. So then after 10 years of that in my private life, right, I saw that the deeper I got into those topic areas, into those those areas of discipline that it actually had a pronounced effect on my my day job work I was able to write uh, what you would call uh, your typical .NET C sharp applications with much greater quality reliability and performance and so I couldn't always explain it to my peers but it was just a a, a crossover effect so where am I with this today? Where I'm at it with it today is that I've grown over time to see that the Linux operating system and how it's defined, and keep in mind, nothing is perfect. Well, okay, some things are perfect, but most things are not pitch perfect all the time. But when we talk about scales of excellence and scales of quality, Linux as a whole is a higher quality than Windows. So that's my point of view. C++ as a language is of a higher quality 
than many of the alternatives. It's not the only way to write code. It's not the only way to look at the world of software development. But it has the quality of being more stable than alternatives. Now, it is true that with C++ and its very close sibling, uh, C, that you can have memory safety issues like you saw with CrowdStrike in July of 2024. However, that's more of a skill issue on the part of the software developer, the individual software developer, and that has nothing to do with actual management. You could put all the management processes in place all you want, and something can still slip through if it um, is assumed that there is competence, um, uh, that, that you have competence in the, in the pipeline, high competence in the pipeline. Things can still slip through. And so ultimately your best assurance of quality is in the actual individual that is executing that process. In this case, writing code and building software application. Beyond that though, what I see is a language that has a good balance between performance and granularity. So we can go deep into the system as much as we need to or that is necessary if it's necessary or if it's our preference you can do that through C++ in a much more seamless way than you can with other languages you can not achieve this with other languages by pairing them with the C programming language right but that is quite excessive in the community and ecosystem of those languages right where it's uh, totally normal in the realm of C++. But you can also go the other way in C++. You can go towards very high level, highly conceptual concepts and abstractions. And you can write code that way and be very successful. Also, you have a greater level of insight into the way your software actually translate your your source code translates into software and that is a valuable thing to know when you have to troubleshoot and diagnose the actual operational aspects of your program so that's my short take on Linux and C++ and if you have any questions, let me know.